Hi, my name's Jeremy Sheehan, and we're standing at the base of Muttonbud Island in Coffs Harbour. I wanted to bring you here because uh, it's a special place, really. One of the main things about it at the moment is it's got this work uh, behind me installed. The name of the work is Improbable Gluttony, and it was uh, created by a group of TAFE students based on an um, exploration of ocean plastics and the effect that they're having on the local mutton bird population that live on the island. Before we talk about that though, I just want to give you a bit of background to this place and to the project um, Transmigration that uh, I'm talking about today. It's a big one for me really and the project um, is something that is beyond me uh, in quite a few ways. I guess the main one is that it's overtaken me. Um, in conceptualising it and coming up with um, plans, one thing I did was approach um, some people about getting the works here, and well, here they are, which is kind of beyond our wildest dreams, and it all happened very quickly. From there, the project um, needs to develop further and uh, spread its wings, pardon the pun. Um, speaking of wings, I'm actually winging it today, and I, I want to tell you a, a story uh, just to, to get us started. I've been coming here since I was uh, a kid and one of my earliest memories of, of this place uh, was coming here fishing one day with a friend of mine. It's going to be a bit noisy today. We're in the middle of school holidays. Um, there's some kids behind me on a skateboard and that's all part of the, the work which is also why it was important to be here uh, outside. Getting back to that story though, I remember uh, a friend of mine and I were fishing on the breakwater that links this island to the mainland. When we were walking out, we could just see this incredible swarm of black and white, black from the mutton birds and white from seagulls, covering the water, um, about the size of a football field or bigger. Underneath them, the whole water was just erupting in this frenzy of foam and fish. and. Uh, being young and wildly excited, we basically sprinted towards the end of the island or the base of the island and my friend said, oh, my parents said that I can't really go out here by myself. And I thought, well, my parents didn't say that, so I guess it means that I can. Off I went. Up and over the island and standing at the base, there were fish literally coming onto the rocks. It was something that I had never seen before. I've been lucky enough to see that sort of thing since, but I have to say the incidence of that are diminishing dramatically. Um, that very thing is what brings the mutton birds here to this island. And one thing that we, we can't see is what's going on out there and at the ocean that we panned around from at the start of this talk. The main thing is that that ocean is getting filled up with, with plastic basically and the plastic breaks down over time into smaller and smaller fragments. And those fragments enter the food chain and they're something that we end up ingesting pretty much whether we like it or not. That's where this work comes in. Uh, inside these birds that you can see here is a um, plastic skeleton. Over the top they're covered with steel wool, seaweed and uh, there was one here which has been adopted Again, that's part of the work, um, and that one was covered with seagrass. So over time, the exterior of the birds will break down, revealing the plastic that they've ingested, and it's that plastic which um, starves and dehydrates the bird, and their stomach ends up being so full that they eventually die. And I guess um, that's the hard-hitting message of the work, and the work is environmental, but it's not trying to be overly environmental. One of the things is for it to be accessible. So where the project um, can go from here is to ex expand in locations. And one of the goals is to get schools from um, across the flight path of the birds, so throughout the South Pacific, to make similar installations and cover them with local materials that relate to their environment. What we'll do is actually bring those birds here and install them at the base of the island. Uh, and we schools here will send birds over to the islands in like a, an exchange. And that'll mirror the migratory path of the, the birds. 
I guess a lot of that has been said in the, um, in the presentation that, or the, the written component that accompanies this video, so I probably shouldn't go back into that in too much more detail. I guess what I need to do is say where the project will go. And taking this um, as like a, a core to, to build other works around, the project will become about mapping. So this is like a 3D map. These birds break down over time and, and map um, what is going on to them and going on to us too. And building on that, uh, the project will incorporate a series of maps. And there will need to be expert collaborators coming in from all sorts of fields to make that a reality. Oceanographers, for example, will um, provide input and data mapping currents. And those currents will be translated into a, a, a map that is accessible like this one, um, rather than like the sign that you might have seen out of the corner of the video. I have to say it's uh, the middle of school holidays. My son Jack is the tripod, holding a, an iPad and doing a fantastic job. I guess if we get back to the, the idea of maps, one thing is that a map needs to be visible. And right now, we tend to be very distracted. We don't have the time to actually sit down and, and digest a, a problem. Um, I work three jobs, four if you um, wanted to get very technical, and in my spare time, what little that I should be spending with my family, I, I tend to try and cram in um, university studies. It's very difficult for me. It means that I'm behind all the time. Uh, one of the reasons that we're here now today is I wanted to hold off to get a sunny day so that we could actually see what was going on to the, in the environment. But where I'm heading with that is, it's about distraction. Um, I become so caught up and distracted in my daily life. The ocean is so vast and it doesn't seem to change that I don't really notice what's going on. And the overarching aim of the project will be to make it noticeable, to make, um, you know, bring it forward so that we can actually see, read and access um, things in a new way uh, and, and really see what's in front of us and under our eyes. So in my lifetime plastics have more than quadrupled in production and that is something also that, that we need to map and convey. I guess as a society we're um, addicted to, to plastics. And again, that's another thing which will need to be mapped. That addiction um, to, to plastics is something that will, is beyond my area of expertise to describe. We've got a plane flying over us at the moment. I'll just keep talking because I don't really know how to start and stop the video. Um, so we'll, we'll just keep going as we can. Basically, that addiction to plastics is cyclical. Um, we we um, become reliant on something for its convenience, it gets to a point where it's no longer convenient, it's actually detrimental, so we have to do something about it. Once that, that we've done something, we then go back to the start of the cycle and look for something that's convenient again. My view and um, where the project is headed is that we're kind of at the peak of it, of plastics being inconvenient we need to find an alternative. And rather than preach, um, the, the idea of the project is to make the, the, the problem visible um, in a way that people can relate to. So I guess um, the big question is, where does it go from here? Um, and that comes back to spreading its wings. It, it really needs uh, it, it really needs to expand and spread out and take in um, a, a lot of collaborators. There's a tendency, I guess, in something like this to um, try and maintain ownership and become a jack of all trades. That's my, not my intention. Uh, my hope is that the project will belong to the community. So I can start uh, by exhibiting a group of um, maps which will be interactive and they're described in the written component. But from there, um, my hope is that it will be taken on. So I'm open to any sort of collaboration that might come uh, my way and other people that might want to take, take it on board. I'd be saying that my three minutes is almost up. 
so on that note I'm just gonna grab the camera off Jack show you the birds and kind of give a bit more explanation as we walk around Thanks, man. So although these works are in place right now, it's not just about them. They, they could be seen as a test work. National Parks actually came on board and gave us this site, which is fantastic. Um, and what it, what it means is that we can actually experiment as, as we go along with the project. Um, we being me and anyone else that, would, that I can get on board as, as collaborators.